What's up guys, Jason here. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to make a simple and efficient Minecraft Bedrock Raid Farm. This farm works on 1.21 and on all platforms of Minecraft Bedrock, whether you play on a phone, tablet, Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, or PC. As you guys can see here, this farm produces a ton of great loot such as emeralds, totems, and enchanted books. For this farm, you'll need two chests, four hoppers, four slabs, four glass blocks, three signs, one lava bucket, two water buckets, about three sacks of leaves. By the way, you can get leaves by mining them with shears. One bed, 18 stairs, about one stack and 36 vines. By the way, you can get vines by mining them with shears. And finally, about nine sacks of solid blocks. You can use any type of solid block you want except for solid blocks that burn. A couple examples of solid blocks that don't burn are smooth stone or cobblestone. The first step is to choose an area to make this farm at. Make sure you choose an area that is at least 100 blocks away from any villagers, beds, or workstations. By the way, I also recommend that you are far away from any mountains. Once you have chosen an area to make your farm at, build up 100 blocks with leaves. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. After you're done placing those 100 leaves, go back down to the ground. Now place vines from here all the way to the top of this pillar. These vines will allow you to easily access the raid farm. By the way, by making this raid farm high in the air, you will prevent raid mobs from spawning below it. Once you are done placing all those vines, place a leaf block over here. Then place two leaves over here. Now place five leaves in this direction. One, two, three, four, five. Then fill in the outline with leaves. The next step is to place two chests over here. Now go behind that chest. Then crouch down and place two hoppers over here. Make sure the nozzles of those hoppers are pointing that way. Then crouch down and place two hoppers over here. Make sure the nozzles of those two hoppers are facing that way as well. Those hoppers will collect the loot and funnel it into the collection's chest. Now crouch down and place 4 slabs over here. The next step is to place a solid block in each of these spots. Then extend each of those walls up by 3 blocks. Once you are done placing all those blocks, place a block over here. Then place 2 glass blocks over here and two over here as well. Now break this block. Those glass blocks will allow you to see the raid mobs that fall into this skill chamber. The next step is to place 18 solid blocks over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. After you're done placing those 18 solid blocks, go back down here. Then place 18 solid blocks in each of these other spots as well. After you're done with that step, the farm should look like that. This will be the drop tube in the farm. The next step is to place a solid block in each of these spots. The next step is to stand at this spot. Now place 7 blocks in this direction. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Once you have done that, go to this spot. Then place 7 blocks in this direction. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Once you have created that outline, fill it in with solid blocks. Once you're done placing all those blocks, the farm should look like that. The next step is to place 8 solid blocks over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Then extend that 8 block high wall around this platform. After you are done creating those walls, cover them with leaves. These leaves will prevent raid mobs from spawning on the walls. The next step is to go over here. Now break these 8 blocks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 
Then break this block and this block as well. Now break these eight blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The next step is to place eight stairs over here. Then place a stair over here and a stair at this spot. Finally, place eight stairs over here. Those stairs will be where you place water in this farm. The next step is to place two solid blocks over here. Then place a sign at this spot. Now place a sign over here and a sign over here. After you have done that, place lava at this spot. That lava will kill all the ravagers in this farm. Then break these two blocks. The next step is to create an infinite water source. To do that, place a block at each of these spots. Then place water over here and water over here. By creating that infinite water source, you will be able to use two buckets to fill in all the water for this entire farm. Then place water in each of these stairs. After you're done placing all that water, fill in and break the infinite water source. At this point, all the water should flow like that. It will push the raid mobs over there. The next step is to go down to this platform. Then place 12 solid blocks over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Then place a block at this spot. After you have done that, place a bed over here. The next step is to place three leaves over here. Then place three leaves over here. Then place two leaves over here. Once you have done that, extend those leaf block walls up by two blocks. After you're done placing all those leaves, break these blocks. By the way, it's really important that you break the blocks that are below the bed to prevent raid mobs from spawning on the bed. The next step is to bring a villager over to this bed. I am now going to show you all one easy way you can do that in survival mode. To do that, first place three blocks over here. Then go to the ground next to this spot. Now place four blocks like this. Then extend each of these walls up until you get up there. After you're done placing all those blocks, you should have a tube that looks like that. The next step is to place three blocks over here, three over here, and three at this spot as well. Then place four blocks over here, four over here, and four over here. After you have created that wall, place 5 blocks over here, 5 over here, and 5 over here as well. Then place a sign at this spot. Now place water over here. As you guys can see there, that water should flow like that. Now go down to the bottom of this tube. Once you are down here, place 2 blocks over here, and 2 over here as well. Then break these two blocks. Now place a sign over here and a sign over here. Those signs will prevent water from spilling out of that tube. The next step is to place kelp from here all the way to the top. By placing all this kelp, you will convert all the water into water source blocks. That will allow the bubble column to flow all the way to the top. Once you are done placing that kelp, go back down to the bottom. Then break the bottom kelp. As you guys can see there, that should cause all the kelp to break. The next step is to replace this block with soul sand. As you guys can see here, that will create a bubble column. This bubble column will transport the villager up here. At this point, go over to a villager. Once you have found a villager, place down a boat. Then push the villager into the boat. Then attach a lead to the boat and slowly walk over to the farm. By the way, don't walk too fast, otherwise the lead will break. If that happens, you can reattach it. If your boat ever gets stuck on a ledge, place some water. Then pull the boat up the water. 
Once you have brought the villager over to this spot, detach the lead. Now place some blocks around the boat. Those blocks will prevent the villager from escaping this area. Now break the boat. Then push the villager into the bubble column. As you guys can see here, the villager will get pushed up the bubble column, then pushed into this chamber. Once your villager is in that chamber, break any blocks that you place to get it in there. Make sure you get rid of the bubble column. After you're done breaking all the blocks that you placed to get the villager in there, wait for it to turn nighttime. As you guys can see there, when it is nighttime, the villager should sleep in that bed. If your villager does not sleep in the bed, try breaking all beds at the village or villager breeder that you got the villager from. Once your villager is sleeping in that bed, place two leaves over here. By the way, it's really important that you place those leaves at the correct spots. Whenever the villager wakes up, its head should be in that leaf block. The reason it's so important to create this leaf block enclosure correctly is to prevent raid mobs from spawning on the bed. By having that villager linked to that bed, this area will get designated as a village. That will cause raids to spawn up there when you have the raid omen effect. I am now going to do a quick fly around so you can check and make sure I've made this raid farm correctly. Over here, this should be the kill chamber. Up here, this should be the drop tube. Over here, this should be the leaf villager enclosure. Finally, up here, this should be this platform. Make sure that the water flows over there and that the lava is at the correct spot. I am now going to show you how to use this farm. To use it, first get an ominous bottle. One easy way you can get ominous bottles is by going to a pillager outpost and killing a pillager captain. Once you have an ominous bottle, stand on this platform. Then drink the ominous bottle. As you guys can see there, that will give you the raid omen effect. After 30 seconds, your raid will start. As you guys can see here, a raid is now starting. The raid mobs will spawn on that top platform, then get pushed into this kill chamber. Whenever mobs fall down here, you can easily kill them. You will collect the XP, and the loot will get funneled into that chest. By the way, you may also collect some loot in your inventory. Once you have defeated all the mobs from one wave, another wave will start. By the way, you'll never have to kill any Ravagers because the Ravagers will get killed by the lava. If you want to get more loot from this farm, you can kill the mobs while holding a sword that is enchanted with Looting 3. As you guys can see there, the raid is now completed. Whenever you want to collect the loot, you can open this chest. By the way, if this farm does not produce totems of undying for you, make sure your world difficulty is set to normal or hard. Whenever you want to do another raid, drink another ominous bottle. If this farm does not work for you, try setting your world simulation distance to 4 chunks. You can do that by leaving your world then going into the world settings. If any raid mobs spawn outside the farm, cover any areas where they spawn outside the farm with leaves. If you want to learn how to make an automatic raid farm that also produces ominous bottles, I recommend you check out my best simple 1.21 raid farm tutorial. A link to that tutorial is in the description. I hope you all enjoyed learning how to make this simple and efficient Minecraft Bedrock Raid Farm. Please like, comment, subscribe, and check out other Minecraft videos. Thanks for watching.